Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna talk about distorted or deformed flowers on orchids. What are they? How do they look like? And especially, why do they happen? Recently, I had quite a few distorted flowers, I have to say. So I looked more into the subject and I do think it's a pretty interesting subject that I don't see many people talking about. So let's get to it. Let me show you my latest distorted flower, which is quite the disappointment. And here we have it. You might actually be able to recognize this orchid. This is my Cattleya purpurata, which I was very excited to see the flower of. And it's easy to see there's something very wrong with this flower. Yes, it's lacking some structures. It is actually lacking the petals. They should have been right here, but they're not. Now, this is not a singular case. I have to say I had this in the past as well. Recently, it happened with my Rincolalia glauca. I think I had one on the Encyclia vitellina, I might be wrong. They were actually not the only cases that I've seen with petals missing, identical features. Well, they all had something in common. It is the very first time this orchid blooms. And first flowers in an orchid's life are really not the full potential and in some cases they're actually deformed, such as this. So for these orchids, there is an excuse. I would say the second and third flowering will be closer to the full potential and to normal. But really, it's all a lottery. You can be lucky enough to not have anything missing or distorted on your flower, or you can be unlucky. The more orchids you have, the more chances you have to see something distorted. Now, missing features are not the only problem you can have with first-time bloomers. You can experience color break, missing colors, all sorts of weird patterns that should not be on the flower, particularly if we're referring to hybrids, but the second and third blooming of the orchid might actually look totally different. If this happens, don't despair, it happens to all of us. The more orchids you have, the more often it happens. Happens. A second group of deformed flowers are due to genetics. And this is a very, very vast subject because we can have all sorts of displays due to genetics, which can be bad or can be good. Some genetical mutations can be quite appealing. And if you remember, I have that Phalaenopsis, which has a split flower. Half of it is colored differently and has a different pattern, while the other half looks totally different. And this is quite unique, as it is something which should not happen with that Phalaenopsis. There aren't many Phalaenopsis on the market looking like that, so this little feature gives a uniqueness to the flower. But as you can see, it's not something really unappealing, at least to the vast majority of people. It's quite interesting. The distortion in this case has to do with color and pattern. It doesn't really have to do with the shape of the flower, which I believe is a better scenario than having distorted flowers from the point of view of shape. But this is not the only deformity we can encounter. There are all sorts of color variations which just turn out to be unique and it is actually a stable gene which will be displayed at every flowering. This is something we're kind of all looking for, particularly when we're dealing with hybrids. Sadly though, there are some bad mutations which we don't want to have. Let's remember the Cattleya intermedia variety equity that I have. That one apparently has a permanent mutation that refers to the shape of the flower. You'll have some footage on the screen the first time this orchid bloomed for me. One of the flowers appeared not to be open completely. And as a result of the formation of the bud, it self-pollinated, which should not happen to Cattleyas. So obviously I lost the flower prematurely. And then the second time it bloomed for me, the same story. I don't remember if I had the flower very mutated, but it was not opening completely. And that's an alarm because this orchid doesn't really appear like it's a young orchid. It appears to be a division. So I don't think we are talking about the first blooming here. I think it's a permanent mutation of this orchid. It's funny because the Aquini is actually a pyloric version of the Intermedia, but we're gonna get to that. So problems with the Aquini kind of makes sense. Now these are mutations and distortions which have to do with the genetics of the orchid. It's not necessarily external factors or something you did. And sadly, these are the worst because we cannot change them. Once we establish it is a permanent mutation, we kind of have to live with it. And this is not the only type of physical mutation due to genetics you can have on orchids. Some orchids can miss structures completely, like in the first case, but on a permanent basis. So imagine an orchid which permanently doesn't have 
petals or doesn't have a lip or maybe does have them but very distorted and actually do have a vanda which blooms like that. It created two flower spikes this year. It was not the first time this orchid bloomed and the flowers really did look a little distorted in the sense that the petals did not have that proper shape. They were smaller and I feel like they were trying to imitate the lip. Some flowers actually didn't have a fully formed lip um, the second flower spike looked worse than the first one actually I'm not sure if I filmed it so in this case yet again we have a permanent mutation that refers to the shape of the flower and its components some structures were missing or were deformed and it is of a permanent nature sadly so again it's one of those orchids we kind of have to live with and as a personal note it is one of those cases that I cannot live with being that I'm trying to conserve space I don't really like those type of mutations but nonetheless it is something you cannot do anything about it has to do with the genetics and that is that you either like it either you don't speaking about genetical mutations that we cannot do anything about here is a good one that was born from hybridization the peloria now i do have a separate video dedicated to peloric orchids you can visit the description find out more about them i'll just brush the surface right now peloric orchids are visually appealing to humans, the petals trying to take the shape of the lip or vice versa in recent years. What's most important with Peloria is that we have a symmetry between the right and the left side, which usually spells physically appealing to the human eye. If the Peloria wouldn't have been symmetric, we would have landed in the previous case of the Vanda that I showed you with distorted structures. But if it is symmetric, it looks good to us. And Peloria actually can affect all sorts of orchids, Phalaenopsis, Cattleya, Cymbidiums, everything you can imagine, and it has a few characteristics. Some flowers appear not to open completely, and this is because the petals stay slanted forward, and most probably you've already seen in flower shops those Phalaenopsis, which simply don't open completely. Well, they will never open because they are peloric. It's not my favorite Peloria trait, my favorite is the one with flat petals and sepals and as flat as the lip as possible. The Peloria in which the petals take a little bit the shape of the lip, but in a very elegant and symmetric way, if that makes any sense. It's all personal here. Splash petal Calia hybrids are all Peloric, and if you trace the ancestry, you will find a common ancestor. It is the Intermedia variety Aquini, which is a natural peloric orchid as far as I understand, as far as some people suggest. And that peloria trait that the Aquini has is a dominant gene and is transmitted to its hybrids. And the hybrids transmit it forward and so on and so forth. And this is why we have so many splash petal cattleyas. They all have the Aquini variety of the intermedia in common. A third type of mutation and distortion refers to mechanical damage generally. Now what you see in front of you is a more complex case, but it is pretty easy to assume that if you manage to damage the buds, the flowers might be a little distorted. They might have little holes, little parts of them missing. Overall, they will not be symmetrical and probably they will not look that good. Damage of the buds can happen if you personally damage the buds or you scratch them or you have a pest grazing on the buds and so on and so forth. In that case, obviously, we're not dealing with a permanent mutation, it's just something aesthetic that goes away the next time the orchid blooms. If you don't damage the buds, everything should be okay. There is another type of damage you can do and this is the flower spike damage and this is the case of my orchid. I managed to break the flower spike in many, many places as you can see and even though I tried to reconnect the flower spike as much as I could, I, it was impossible, I didn't do a great job and this reflected in the flower. Now this is already a peloric orchid and you've seen the footage a little earlier in the video. Now it is completely missing a lip and the flower is completely distorted. It is very, very tiny as you can see. It doesn't have vivid colors and this is because I severed the channels of sap. So this flower didn't receive enough sugars, enough energy from the orchid due to the breakage in the flower spike and a shortage of sugars leads to a deformed flower. 
In my case, it is something physical because I did snap the flower spike. But this can happen due to chemical reasons as well. And this will be a fourth category. We're not gonna sit on the third physical damage because it's pretty obvious. If you damage a flower, it will not look pretty. The chemical damage, let's call it like that, refers to, let's say, deficiencies in nutrients. So if we imagine that the orchid could not push sugars to the flower, we can imagine that a lack of nutrients, which in turn determines a lack of sugars, can do the very same thing for a flower. So sometimes poor flowering, even distorted flowers, do have to do with a lack of nutrients. A lack of nutrients can happen if you don't fertilize, yes, but it can also happen if you don't fertilize correctly. Sometimes the chemical elements interact with each other. If we have too much magnesium, we might determine a shortage in potassium, for example, and that could lead to anomalies in the flowers. It's a rarer case and you would have to really, really not fertilize the orchid or fertilize it very wrongly to get such a result. Orchids are not heavy feeders, but it does happen sometimes. The flowers might not be distorted at all, but they might actually be tinier. They might be in a lower count than they should be. It's still a distortion. The chemical distortion doesn't only apply to nutrients. External factors determine certain hormonal levels within the orchid. Let's just think about the orchids that need a winter rest, such as the dendrobium anosmum and other deciduous dendrobiums. They get triggers from the outside world to do certain things. And sometimes this can actually reflect on the flowers, particularly with dendrobiums. If we don't offer that winter rest, we might not have a lot of blooms. Sometimes we have blooms that can create roots from the stem as well. And this is because they share a growth point. Anomalies in the environment can actually translate into anomalies in flowers. Yet again, it's not a very, very common thing to have, but indeed it can happen. And when I say distortion, I mean not necessarily a flower which is mutilated, but all sorts of anomalies referring to the flowers. Also, if we play around with hormones too much, aka dose all sorts of growth hormones, we can have distorted flowers. This is the same thing that happens with cakey paste. If you know what that is, it's supposed to create cakeys on Phalaenopsis, but sometimes we get distorted flower spikes instead, or distorted buds, distorted flowers, and so on. So again, pertaining to the chemical sphere, playing around with plant hormones doesn't always end in nice results. External factors, fertilizers, hormones, additives, boosters, all of those things we expose the orchids to will have an impact on the orchid. And while some of these substances have a good impact, if we overdose or overuse them or even underuse them, they might have the reverse. So everything we do, we need to control and we need to do it wisely, otherwise it will actually reflect to the flowers. Color breaking can be chemical in nature as well, but the culprit is something that we all fear and this is a virus. Now, in this case, this is not a virus to orchid, this is just an anomaly that happened only on this flower, only now. So things of the sorts can happen, but extreme color break on the flowers, of course correlated with other symptoms, can mean a virus infection. Sadly, there is no cure for viruses in the orchid world, so once that happens, obviously we can have all sorts of anomalies showing on the leaves and also on the flowers. And I only had one case of color break, which I remember and I believe it was a virus orchid. I'll share with you more information about viruses, how to test them and all of that. I have some videos on the matter, some tests to show and so on and so forth. It is chemical, let's say, in nature because it does have to do with the internal balance of the orchid. And because I'm sure there might be other reasons and other explanations for things, check the description down below. I'll try to add some more information and articles that I find on the subject. It's a nice read if you're interested in the subject. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and let us know down below what weird mutations you discovered with your orchids. I feel like orchids can always surprise us, so the more we know, the better. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, you know the drill. Give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos. And also don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.